In this film, we're concerned with the interference patterns of ripples made on the surface of water. The ripples are produced in a ripple tank by two dippers which vibrate on the surface. Light passing through the water is reflected from a mirror through a lens to form an image of ripples on a screen. We've obtained this true image by the Schlieren technique of inserting a stop in the light path. The two small dippers vibrate on the surface of the water. Each dipper produces its own pattern of ripples and the two sets of patterns overlap. Now the dippers are put out of step. They're vibrating in antiphase and produce a different pattern. In step, they produce a pattern like this. Out of step, the pattern is like this. Our purpose now is to study the various patterns which can be produced with this apparatus. So that we can study these patterns more closely, the images formed by the ripples have been slowed to 1 24th of their actual speed by stroboscopic means. Two sources are here vibrating in phase, producing crests and troughs in step with one another. The result is an interference pattern. Along these lines, the waves from the two sources always arrive out of step and neutralize each other, producing interference fringes of minimum wave motion. Minimum wave motion. Maximum wave motion. Now the two sources are vibrating in phase about five wavelengths apart. When the dippers are moved closer together, the interference fringes spread out. Now the sources have been separated more widely. The interference fringes close in. When one of the dippers is moved, these effects are clearly demonstrated. As the sources come closer together, the fringes are widely separated. When the sources are widely separated, the fringes are closer together. When the two sources are vibrating in phase, they produce crests and troughs in step with one another. Note the position of this interference fringe. When one source is put out of step, we notice the shift of the interference fringes. The regions of maximum and minimum effect are interchanged. In phase, out of phase. In phase, out of phase. The two sources are vibrating at the same frequency producing the now familiar interference pattern with the interference fringes occupying fixed positions. Now the frequency of one source is slightly increased. The interference pattern becomes distorted and wheels steadily round. At any point such as this, regions of maximum and minimum wave motion sweep by, producing the effect of beats. As the frequency of the source is further increased, the beats follow one another more rapidly. Beats are moving interference fringes. The beat frequency is equal to the difference in the frequencies of the two sources. Now the origin of the waves is obscured, but we can tell from the visible pattern that there are two sources present and can deduce from the close spacing of the fringes that the sources are widely separated. This prediction is verified when we remove the screen. Now the fringes are widely separated, indicating that the sources are close together.
Do you think this pattern is produced by a single or double source? There are two sources, but their separation is barely one wavelength, therefore the fringes are so widely separated that they are not easily distinguished. If we again mask the dippers, bearing these facts in mind, we can study the details of the display which indicate the true nature of the origin of the waves. If we again reduce the distance between the dippers to less than one wavelength, the wave pattern is difficult to distinguish from that produced by a single source. Demonstrations of interference can be carried out with any ripple tank, but the Schlieren technique shows the effect more clearly.